Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord our Lord Jesus Christ saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, good will towards men. We praise Thee, we bless Thee, we worship Thee, we glorify Thee, we give thanks to Thee for Thy great glory. O Lord God, Heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord the Only Begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who inspired your servant Luke, the physician, to set forth in the gospel of in the gospel, the love and healing power of your Son. Graciously continue in your church this love and power to heal, to the praise and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. A reading from the book of Ecclesi Ecclesiasticus. Honor physicians for their services, for the Lord created them, for their gift of healing comes from the Most High, and they are rewarded by the King. The skill of physicians makes them distinguished, and in the presence of the great they are admired. The Lord created medicines out of the earth, and the sensible will not despise them. And he gave skill to human beings that he might be glorified in his marvelous works. By them, the physician heals and takes away pain. The pharmacist makes a mixture from them. God's works will never be finished. And from him, health spreads over all the earth. My child, when you are ill, do not delay, but pray to the Lord and he will heal you. Give up your faults and direct your hands rightly and cleanse your heart from all sin. Then give the physician his place. For the Lord created him. Do not let him leave you, for you need him. There may come a time when recovery lies in the hands of physicians, for they too pray to the Lord that he grant them success in diagnosis and in healing for the sake of preserving life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading Psalm 147. Hallelujah. How good it, How good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant it is to honor him with praise. The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem. He gathers the exiles of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He counts the number of the stars and calls them all by their names. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. There is no limit to his wisdom. The Lord lifts up the lowly, but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music to our God upon the harp. He covers the heavens with clouds and prepares rain for the earth. He makes grass to grow upon the mountains and green plants to serve mankind. 
He provides food for flocks and herds and for the young ravens when they cry. He is not impressed by the might of a horse. He has no pleasure in the strength of a man. But the Lord has pleasure in those who fear him, in those who await his gracious favor. Worship the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. He has established peace on your borders. He satisfies you with the finest of wheat. He sends out his command to the earth, and his word runs very swiftly. He gives snow like wool. He scatters hoarfrost like ashes. He scatters his hail like breadcrumbs. Who can stand against his cold? He sends forth his word and melts them. He blows with his wind and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob, his statues and his judgment to Jacob. He has not done so to any other nation. To them he has not revealed his judgments. Hallelujah. Make music to our God upon the harp. A reading from Paul's second letter to Timothy. As for you, always be sober, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, carry out your ministry fully. As for me, I am already being poured out as a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Do your best to come to me soon, for Demas, in love with this present world, has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. Crescens has gone to Galatia, Titus to Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is useful in my ministry. I have set, sent Titicus to Ephesus. When you come, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas, also the books, and above all the parchments. The word of the Lord. Thank you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Jesus began to speak in the synagogue at Nazareth. Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. He said, is not this Joseph's son? He said to them, doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, doctor, cure yourself. And he would say, do hear also in your hometown the things that we have heard you did at Capernaum. He said, Truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, and there was a severe famine over all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them, except to a widow at Zarephath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. I heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so that they might hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise 
words of my mouth, the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. You know, I've noticed something going on in our country right now, and perhaps you've noticed it too. Hopefully you've not experienced it yet. But people deciding they can no longer be friends with people, or at least have to take a time out from some folks. Sometimes it's not, not even just friends, but occasionally even family. That this election has just put people at such odds with each other that the thought of even being a Facebook friend becomes more almost intolerable. But I have to say, I have not unfriended anybody yet. I scroll past stuff I know that's just going to give me a heart of heartburn. And I know who's going to give it to me. So when I see them, I'm just like, yep, just keep scrolling. Luckily, I'm also in a family where everybody pretty much agrees with me, so I don't have to worry about that. But it saddens me to think that we could be that kind of a society where everybody's going to stand their ground and I would rather not be your friend or I'd rather have you no longer be a member of my family based on an election. I'm not saying that the election is not important and does not have consequences, but I'm just happy I haven't gotten to that place. I also know that it's also true that there are people in our lives that we can remember being friends with who either we've just drifted apart or there really is a moment where it was over. And again, I lament that. I lament that especially the ones that I can't figure out what happened. What, where was the drift? And is there a way to reach out and maybe bring them back in? Paul sort of is lamenting that at this point, isn't it? He says to, to Timothy, all these people that were important to him, Demas, Christian, all these folks who have left him. He's feeling abandoned in his last days where they're, they're in love with the world, they've gone away. And he has that wonderful word, only Luke is with me. And it's probably the only reason that this reading was done today, because of course we're celebrating our paternal feast day, St. Luke's day, it literally is today, but it would have been bounced to Monday or some other day, except unless your, Saint, unless your church is named St. Luke's, but that only Luke is with me. I'm thankful again that I have somebody that I would consider like that Luke that's always with me. Maybe they call it these days, who's your BFF, right? They say that term. But I hope all of us have at least one person in our lives that we know I can count on to be there. I mean, for me, I know who that person is. I'm married to her. She's asleep right now. <laughs> no, she's, I can generally count on her being there. I have some other friends that, again, yeah, I feel fairly confident will be there when I need somebody to scream to or whine at or just have a pity party or who, if something's going on really well, would be able to celebrate with me. But he also knows that he needs Timothy to come, bring some other people and bring the things that he's left behind that are going to be necessary as his earthly pilgrimage comes to a close. Because we've heard these, this phrase before, probably at funerals more often than not, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, and now there's a crown of righteousness waiting for me. I mean, I'm not at the end of my journey by any stretch of the imagination as far as I can tell. But I know that there have been times when I have fought the good fight. Have you ever fought the good fight? You have given it your all. You have tried to play by the rules. Sometimes you've won that fight, but there have also been times when the referee counted you out. There was a TKO on your behalf, but you know that at least you strove and gave it your best. And we're still in a race, aren't we? Still trying to run, still trying to achieve the goals that we set for ourselves that we, when we're feeling like we're following God's will. But the race ain't over yet. There's still things to be done. And Paul also encourages Timothy, do live your ministry to its fullest. Even if Paul feels like his fight's over, he knows that there's still work to be done and wants to encourage Timothy to do.
do this as well. Today the bishop proclaimed that this was Stewardship Sunday. I could have cheated and just been, well, I couldn't do it at this service apparently, but I could, because I knew the internet's not working, but I, we would, there are churches that will literally be bringing him in via video to share his sermon. Janice Statley asked me, hey, do you want to do that? And I'm like, well, first off, we're celebrating St. Luke's Day. He's preaching on a gospel that they would not have heard, so it wouldn't make much sense. But I do have a stewardship message for you today. It goes back to that phrase, only Luke is with me. When you think about this parish, you say that Luke, not a literal person, but a bigger, wider community, has St. Luke's been there for you? Or does it have the potential to be there for you? Do the people that you look forward to seeing on Sunday mornings or Saturday nights or whenever, or that you work side by side with in other ministries? To me, I celebrate that. That's a reason why I'm willing to give my financial support and also my time outside of what you pay me to do towards this parish, because it's been there for me. But there is a faith community that's living out its mission and ministry in ways that make sense to me. It's fighting the good fight. It is running its race. There have been some obstacles in 2020, haven't there, to doing some of what we usually like to do. But I know that once we get past this pandemic, we'll be able to open our doors again in the mission, the race that we like to run, of helping people in their own healing, those 12-step groups to which we open our doors to, they'll be back at some point. Just when, right now there's things beyond our control that keep that from happening. But it's part of the race that God has set before us, and we know we should be doing. We've been blessed that once again we can run that race of feeding the hungry again. That our Hot Meals Ministry at St. Mark's They've started running their race, and we've been invited to join back in in fighting that good fight. It's again why financially supporting your parish is important. It's also to know that in your joys and in your sorrows, there's a faith community ready to uphold you, to walk with you, to run side by side with you as you run your race. And to me, that's a value, something of great value in this time and that we find ourselves in. So when you get that letter that's coming out in the next week or so, carefully ask you, where has Luke been for you? Does this faith community still speak to where your heart and soul want to proclaim Christ in word and example? If so, then... I hope you fill out that card. If not, I hope you'll talk to me or a member of the vestry and say, where, where are we missing the point? What, what are the good fights that we should be fighting? What's the race we should be running? My hunch is if we do our ministry fully, God will bless whatever it is we choose to do. We'll always be given the resources we need to do, to run that race and to finish it. But I'll know this, I'll give thanks that folks like you are with me. That that greater community that we call St. Luke's is still alive and well and helping us to run our race. Amen. Let's stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church for the Diocese of Quebec in Canada, the Diocese of Coventry in England, the Diocese of Krishna Godavari and Rea Lasima in South India, the Diocese of Raywind in Pakistan, the Diocese of Kubwa in Nigeria, the Diocese of Rajasthan and Kutak in North India, the Diocese of Quebec and Rejaf in South Sudan, the Diocese of Cornavaca in Mexico, the Diocese of Curitiba and Recife in Brazil, the Diocese of Siangugu in Rwanda, and the Diocese of Kuching in Southeast Asia. Our companion diocese, Ecuador Central and Littoral, our sister parish, Buen Pastor in Quito, Ecuador, members and ministry of the Youth Council Arts, St. Luke's Church in Ewing, Gladstone, Metuchen, and Woodstown, St. Luke and All Saints Church in Union, spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Michael, our presiding bishop, Chip, our bishop, the Standing Committee of Ecuador Central, Cristobal, Bishop of Ecuador Littoral, all bishops in the Anglican Communion, Juan Carlos, the Vicar of Buen Pastor, and Ed, our Rector, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer, and to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present and virtually, that with me heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Donald, our president, and Phil, our governor, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor Austin, Ben, Bob, Bridget, Caitlin, Candy, Charisse, Charles, Connie, Danielle, David, Diane, Eleanor, Elizabeth, Frank, Fred, 
Gareth, Gary, Helen, Ivy, Jane, Janine, Jay, JD, Joan, Joseph, John, Johnny, Karen, Casey, Karen, Kathy, Lauren, Lourdes, Maria, Marilyn, Mary Ellen, Mary Lou, Mary, Marin, Nancy, Patricia, Pearl, Phil, Richard, Rhea, Ritza, Rob, Robin family, Ronnie, Sandra, Sarah H, Slovak family, Sophia, Susan, Valencia, Wendy, and Zach, Michelle, Kurt, Peggy, Scott, Kay, Melissa, Ginny, John, Will, Richie, Kathy. For the refugees on the southern border and the men and women who serve in the military, first responders, and all who suffer during this pandemic, and all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, and any other adversity. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants, Monica, John, and Jacob, Walter, Sal, Sue, Balina, Suzanne, Brenda, Betsy, Brian, Jordan, Abigail, and others known to us as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their life. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, who has so consecrated the state of matrimony, give your particular grace, we pray, to your servants, Igor and Lauren, Chet and George, and others known to us as they celebrate their wedding anniversary. Grant that they may continue to love, honor, and cherish each other. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, especially all those who have, especially Stephanie, Phyllis, Richard, all those who have given their lives for our country and for victims of natural disasters, war, and acts of terrorism throughout the world, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of St. Luke and of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Amen. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith, and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, Almighty God Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ maker, maker of all things, Christ, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy have promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all you that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he has a perfect offering for our sins, not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Good morning. Warm welcome to everybody that's here, um, and to anybody who may watch this video later. Uh, the, we give you some updates on some stuff. Uh, pumpkin patch going really well. I mean, we sold over a thousand dollars worth of pumpkins yesterday, huh. which actually puts us perilously close to going. We already reached the thirty percentile of getting a profit off that, and then that week get another grand in the next two weeks. That's thirty-three percent. Again, it's not really about the money, it's much more about the goodwill. Money helps, but it's not the ultimate thing. But again, we still have some openings. I think there's even some this afternoon. So if you have a moment, go and see what's still open. And if you have some time, it would be greatly appreciated having it staffed, especially on the weekends. Because week, during the week, it's a little slower, but obviously yesterday we were moving pumpkins like crazy. Uh, the, I'm feeling fairly confident that in two weeks we should be able to be over there. God willing, and the wind, good weather of that last week in October, because that's when the windows are supposed to come, and that's really the last piece of the puzzle. Eight o'clock, we obviously see that we won't have a problem getting that with our social distancing in there. So keep your fingers crossed. I may have to get like a sandwich board kind of sign to say church is in whatever room, but. My hunch is at least for 5.30 and 8 o'clock folks, definitely over there. Next Sunday is the fourth Sunday of the month, which means it's St. Mark's. Again, if you would like to be a, well, helping out the day of, talk to Jim or Patrick, because as they found out last time, I think you said six people is about the perfect number in the space and for what's needed to be done. Because if there are too many more than that, then you're going to be banging into each other or something like that. But, and again, if you're going to make desserts, please individually wrap them ahead of time. And last but not least, on usually on St. Luke's Day, uh, after the 10 o'clock especially, we would have had a festive coffee hour and celebrated our non-engineerings. So unfortunately, obviously, we're not going to be having any festive coffee hours, but I think it's still important to recognize that group of people. For those going, what does non-engineering mean? How do you even spell it? It means you made it to 90. And we actually have about, oh, I think it's 11. No, maybe more than that. It's actually 12. 12 people uh, who are still with us and in many cases still actually moving and getting around. But I want to just acknowledge their names and give thanks that, that God has continued to bless them with long life. Elizabeth Dietz, Earl Gatling. Doris Williams, Marion Stevens, Eleanor Jaros, Helen Stapley, Mary Van Schaaf, Phyllis Bodinghouse, Patricia Coble, Doc Canary, and Bill Kears. One guy, but yes. <laughs> and if anybody else is out there that's getting closer to 90, like next year, let me know that, because I don't, not everybody tells me what year they're born. But again, my, our prayers and blessings upon all those folks that hopefully can have a year of good health and happiness. Yeah, it's worth applauding in what the um, Let us with gladness was at the, oh, that's right. Anybody here got a birthday, by the way, or anniversary? I didn't think so. Um, 
If you're watching the video and it's your birthday, please know of our prayers and pray that you will also have a blessed year ahead. Let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord. This morning we're using Eucharistic Prayer 2, if you brought a prayer book with you. That's on page 340. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet right in our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God. who in the multitude of thy saints has compassed us about with so great a cloud of witnesses that we rejoicing in their fellowship may run with patience the race that is set before us and together with them may receive the crown of glory that fadeth not away. Therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven we laud and magnify thy glorious name evermore praising thee and saying Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts Heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord Most High. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, O Lord our God, for that thou didst create heaven and earth, and didst make us in thine own image, and of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him, and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there a full and perfect sacrifice for the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we thy people do celebrate and make with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again with power and great glory. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us. And with thy word and Holy Spirit to bless and sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be unto us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, whereby we often present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies. Grant we beseech thee that all who partake of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And also we and all thy whole church may be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. For the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. 
And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the peace. Alleluia! O Lamb of God that takest away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God that takest away the sins of the world. Have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God that takest away the sins of the world. Grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table. But thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee that Thou hast feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food and most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And thus we should stay alive by the favor and witness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of Thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The peace of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of the Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ.